Hi everyone, my name is Adi and today we've got a special guest, the winner of the first ever 174 player women's tour. Please welcome Fiona Shimikevich. Fiona, how are you doing? Hey, I'm, uh, I'm doing great. Uh, I honestly was not expecting to win this tournament. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone ever, everyone goes into a tournament wanting to win. I don't think anyone ever expects to win. So, uh, yeah, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm, I've am i been playing this game for um, since 2015. I started as a senior, but I didn't play the full season out because uh, I didn't know about events. I started taking the ser- se- uh, VGC seriously in, in, t- in 2017, and then it just went from there. My first Worlds qualification was 2018, and I also qualified for 2019 Worlds as well. Uh, like I mentioned, you just won this uh, incredible, the first real Series 6 tournament, the first major, um, and a really impressive run. Um, tell me a little bit about the team that you used to do that. Okay, so the team that I used, it's not really like my play style at all. I'm more of a defensive player, I find. I don't normally like using uh, stuff like Talonflame to set up Tailwind and go aggressive because then that really forces you to not uh, switch much. You're basically forced to just keep attacking until you get as much pressure on your opponent's field as possible. It's not really my style, but uh, Lapras makes it so that it it provides bulk as well. Yeah, so uh, the six Pokemon were uh, Lapras, Talonflame, Raichu, Urshifu, Serena, and Duraludon. Um, and I think one of the things that a lot of people going into Series 6 noticed was that they took out a lot of the good defensive Pokemon, like Incineroar, like Rillaboom, like Togekiss, and while they took out some of the stronger offensive Pokemon, like Cinderace and Dragapult, they left some really big threats in, and so finding ways to deal with those um, and, and still manage to have some bulk seemed really important, and so Lapras was definitely one of the premier ways to do that. Yeah, for sure. Um, personally, I think that Primarina is the better water type in the format, but I think Lapras specifically on this team fit better. So did you build the team around Lapras or did you start with something else? So originally I wanted, I wanted, um, Raichu for sure. And I wanted, uh, either Lapras or Primarina. I was testing both of those. And then I actually found, uh, I couldn't really, I had an idea for a Talonflame Lapras, but it wasn't really working. I found it kind of passive and not doing much damage. Um, then I found somebody else using a sim- four out of six on the ladder of uh, what I was, what I what ended, up, ended up using. But I thought, you know, Raichu and uh, Serena would look pretty good on this guy's team. So I decided to rebuild it myself. Yeah, and uh, we've seen some Lapras talent play him a little before. We saw Alex Gomez, uh, I think, in second place at the Players' Cup Invitational. We'll put that back in Series 4. Uh, and so with a little bit of a format reset, this has definitely become another premier threat. Um, but the Pokemon that I think everyone is going crazy over in Twitch chat during the finals of this tournament was Serena. Why did you choose to use Serena on this team? Okay, so the grass types in this, thir- let's be real, once Rillaboom uh, left the format, there's been a big lack of grass types. Um, Serena is really good with Talonflame, I find, because it just stops priority. Same with Urshifu as well, It also uh, it's good with that as well. It just stops Fake Out, which is common, I think, on, like, especially Grimmsnarl being common, I thought. It was going to stop stuff like Thunder Wave or Scary Face or Fake Tear, stuff like that. I thought that would be big. So it just allows Talonflame to get like free moves off without having to opt into that quick guard option. Mm-hmm. It's also very strong too, as you guys might have seen. It uh, straight up one-shotted a Sylveon with Power Whip, thanks to the fact I was uh, Miracle Seed boosted. Mm-hmm. It also gets access to Grassy Glide as well. I was running both Power Whip and Grassy Glide because there are situations where you don't have to risk missing a move. And if you end up maxing it, once the three turns are done, you have the grassy terrain, so you can just fire off some priority grassy glides. Um, A notable calc was that uh, grassy glide against, like, the normal life orb pre-marina will KO uh, thanks to the Miracle Seed, even without the grassy terrain. 
the print arena is probably like you mentioned is probably the best water type in the format in my opinion i think it's the best pokemon in the format so being able to have a pokemon that so effectively deals with that is really really useful um the other thing i noticed about the serena is that so it, it i think it pairs really well with urshifu because urshifu is one of the few offensive pokemon that you really don't want to dynamax biggest part about dynamax i think is that you get to avoid things like fake out and so having a strong offensive pokemon like urshifu the biggest weakness is that it's susceptible to fake out and you just have a way to completely avoid that altogether yeah i think that was pretty big uh, I, there was actually one round that I thought I lost the game because I'm like, oh, wait, this Primarina has Aqua Jet and I have a 12 HP Urshifu. But I realized, oh, wait, I have a Serena. I don't have to worry about that. I win. <laughs> yeah. And so tell me about Urshifu. Was that always on the team? And why did you choose to use a Choice Band on it? Uh, I think Urshifu is a top five threat in the format. Just because, like, specifically the Dark One. I think the Dark One is, uh, it's unlike uh, what people like to think uh i think the dark one is better than the water just because of the fact that wicked blow is super strong consistently you don't have to worry about those damage rolls with surging strikes mm -hmm. and with uh procking unnecessary berries um the main reason why i chose choice band there's two main reasons well one uh i like focus Sa i like the focus sash variant a lot but i think uh focus sash was a lot better on raichu than on urshifu mm -hmm. and um I couldn't use the Assault Vest on the Raichu because of uh, I like a Assault Vest Duraludon. I think that's my favorite Duraludon set. I don't like being super frail. Even if I have Aurora Veil, like it's still, I still find it really frail. Yeah. Um, Banded Urshifu is able to one-shot a lot of uh, Dusclops and uh, Arcanine. They need to be really bulky in order to live it. Yeah, definitely. And then on top of the really strong Wicked Blow, you also have another priority move in Sucker Punch, which I think makes it so that you have potentially four priority moves on your team. That's one thing that I really like about this team is that uh, you have uh, priority Tailwind with Talonflame, you have priority Brave Bird, priority Sucker Punch, priority uh, Fake Out, and potentially priority Grassy Glide. And then you also have Nuzzle on Raichu. So you really have effective ways of uh, controlling the, the speed and making sure that your Pokemon always go first and, and KO their Pokemon before they can move. Yeah. Um, normally, like stuff like you want to get either the speed control up in some way, like either a Nuzzle or a Tailwind, and then have Urshifu clean in the late game, while Duraludon or um, Lapras will clean in the early game. Mm -hmm. So it seems like your two main Dynamax targets are Lapras and Duraludon. And you talked a little bit about Lapras, but tell me a little bit more about Duraludon. So, um, this may be a weird opinion, but I think Duraludon's really, like, I think it's a top-tier threat in this format, too. Um, I feel like stuff like Hatterene and Redirection, like Clefairy, Amoongus, those are going to be abundant, and Duraludon just uh, ignores those Redirection. I think Dura a weird partnering between uh, Raichu and uh, Duraludon, I think those are really good together because of the fact that... Uh, I don't have to worry about my own lightning rod. I just go around it with a uh, stalwart. Yeah, Duraludon was a Pokemon that I think a lot of people were hyped up about at the very beginning of BGC20 and then slowly uh, kind of fell off a little bit as the metagame developed and as things like Excadrill became really, really common. Uh, and now with no Excadrill, there isn't really much that can actually KO Duraludon consistently, especially with that Assault Vest. And with Thunderbolt to KO Primarina, which is, I think, the, one of the main things that wants to, to damage Duraludon, you've got, it, it, it really, people really struggle to take it out. And you've even got things like Body Press on it, so that if you do Click Max Steel Spikes, you can do a lot of damage even without your special attack stat. Yeah, I found in this format, uh, there was a lot of Arcanine and a lot of Snarl. So normally mm -hmm. people, what they try to do against Duraludon is they try to snarl me down and make me useless. But if I have plus three defense and a body press, that doesn't matter. Yeah, it's. I, I'm I'm thinking about how all of my teams would approach game plans against these individual Pokemon, right? Like Talonflame. My my normally what I want to do is I want to fake it out so that it can't get up Tailwind, and then it loses priority. But you've got a Serena and a fast fake out to deal with that. Uh, same with Urshifu. I really want to fake it out. Pokemon like Duraludon, you really want to, and, and and Lapras too. I think you want to use damage mitigation to to really stop them from doing damage. And then because you have things like body press, I can't do that. Uh, 
and same with Urshifu, it gets to cr use critical hits to, to avoid damage mitigation. So you've got counterplay to basically everything that I can think of that's like prominent in the metagame. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you approach some common matchups? So <clears throat> against the, the most common matchup I was thinking was like, the team that did well in the Players' Cup, Raxon's team with the Grimmsnarl, Arcanine, Draco Zolt, Corviknight, Gastrodon, and Amoongus, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that team was going to be very common because it did well in Series 5 and it has no banned Pokemon on it in Series 6, so I thought people were going to use that a lot. Uh, banded Urshifu, like I, I think I mentioned already, uh, it just rips right through the Arcanine. Also, it destroys the Corviknight as well if it tries to bulk up. I understand I have to worry about Brave Bird and such. But if it has no bulk mm -hmm. ups, I should be able to take a hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really strong. It can power through Ferrothorns too. Ferrothorn wants to iron defense sometimes, and you just say, that's that's funny, and then ignore the defense boosts. Yeah. Yeah, that was a major thing. Uh, Ferrothorn's a little annoying for this team, I find, but you just have to approach it in a way that you either preserve your Talon Flame or you preserve your Urshifu. This Lapras specifically, I am i don't like Lapras was running the um, weakness policy. I find that one's very weak and it's very hard to, uh, it, it's very reliant on your opponent messing up and playing into the fact that you have the, that you don't have the weakness policy. Mm -hmm. So with the life orb, it gives it like, it actually gives it consistent damage despite its uh, poor 80 base special attack. Yeah. And you've got, uh, you've got Thunder on there as well so that you have a little more coverage. I know one of the bigger weaknesses with offensive Lapras is that it can't really power through water types, but you've got, not only do you have like Serena and Raichu and Duraludon to hit those water types, but you also have Thunder on there too. Yeah. I think a few people were wondering why I wasn't running um, Sweet Veil on Serena. And the reason was because I have Thunder on Lapras to turn into Max Lightning if I need to uh, prevent sleep, because of course Amoongus is very common. Uh, right. Yeah. That's the main, that's the main sleep uh, user, I think. Um, and Duraludon as well. It's got the max lightning to be able to, uh, just set up the electric terrain and I can just use it whenever. It's really nice. Yeah. Amoongus is the other Pokemon that I think going into it, I thought was the, the second best Pokemon behind Primarina and on your team, everything can, except for the Raichu can really deal with the Amoongus really well. I think even Urshifu can just KO it with a good blow if they're not running some defense investment too. Yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, I think that was that was really big going into it. Um, so the other big threat that I think of when I think of Series 6 is Porygon Z. Can you tell me a little bit about how your team matches up with those teams? Honestly, I was hoping to play more Porygon Z because I thought that uh, I have a pretty good matchup versus it. I, as I did record the game, so I did play one Porygon Z. It was the final round. They normally like mm -hmm. to lead Clef Porygon Z into me. So I have Raichu Duraludon. I think Raichu Duraludon is the perfect counter for that pairing. Because you force them in a position to follow me. Because they don't want to be nuzzled by the Raichu, right? Right. So you're guaranteed you're either you're clicking nuzzle on the um on the the Porygon if they don't follow me. Clefairy is in a position where it either has to follow me or protect because it's scared of the max steel spike coming towards it. And thanks to the fact that I'm a salt vest, I still eat up a max strike, no problem. I don't have to worry about the fact that they're lowering my speed because I have Talon Flame in the back and, uh, again, paralysis coming my way. But yeah, I just I always take out the clef immediately. If they don't if they protect it, then I, that's fine. They just have a paralyzed Porygon Z and they're useless. Yeah, and and just because the metagame is so undeveloped, I imagine that there are, there aren't really other than the two teams that we talked about, there aren't really teams that you expect to face. Uh, but I noticed some very interesting move choices, uh, specifically um, Heat Wave on Talonflame. Can you tell me why you decided to go with that? So Heat Wave on Talonflame, uh, it's expert built, and I am naive nature, so mm -hmm. I'm not lowering my special attack, which means against Durant, like the normal Life Orb variant, I will pick them off immediately when pe if people decide to do it, because they, they think, okay, I have my redirection. I'm safe, and then they just, then I can just pressure them immediately with Heat Wave. Mm -hmm. It'll catch a lot of people off guard, I find. Uh, obviously, if they're Assault Vest, they will live, but they will be taking massive damage to the point where it really isn't, it's kind of useless in the endgame. Yeah, makes sense. And so, 
those are really, I think, the three biggest damage dealers. Porygon, Z, Dracozolt, and Durant. Uh, as well as the Primarina that you, you've got so many different answers to. And so with that, I think that even though you said that this was an offensive team, you've got answers to all of the other offensive Pokemon, which is really, really important, I think. Yeah, uh, those were definitely major Pokemon I was uh, expecting to go into the tournament, like Porygon Z, Primarina, Amoongus. I played zero Arcanine in Swiss and, and in Top Cut. I cannot believe that actually happened, but I played zero of them. I was really disappointed. That's that's really strange, too. Arcanine's definitely one of the better Pokemon, although I guess with most of the, uh, the offensive Pokemon being special attackers, with the exception of Dracozolt, um, and Urshifu, which kind of ignores the Arcanine anyway, uh, Arcanine has, is in a weird spot in the metagame right now where it doesn't actually want to intimidate many things. Yeah, I actually think like the first the first week of it, it was in the it was in first or it was in first or second in usage. I think it was way too high, in my opinion. And I think that Alyssa posted or it was is posting some usage stats for the tournament, and she said that Arcanine was somewhere in the top three. Uh, so it's it is still very surprising that you didn't face a single one the entire time. Yeah, the fact that I played more Swoobat than Arcanine is uh, really weird. <laughs> wow. I okay so. It's tell me about the uh, matchups that you've faced over the course of the day, uh, over the course of the two days. Um, I, I'm excited to hear about uh, your matchup with Swoobat. <laughs> okay, so round. I'm sure a lot of you know I did start 0-1 in this tournament. Uh, I played against uh, Double Fossil, which is Dracovish and uh, Dracozolt, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was she had um, a Riolu and a Hatterene. Um, I ended up, game one, I ended up misclicking and, uh, did not fake out the, uh, Riolu because she led, uh, she led Hatterene and, uh, Riolu. So normally in that situation, you think, okay, they're going to go for the copycat and the, uh, the trick room, right? And I right. meant to, uh, I meant to do that, but unfortunately I hit the Hatterene and I had a weird interaction where copycat, copycatted my fake out. And uh, it ended up faking out my other Pokemon, which I didn't end up Dynamaxing, which was really unfortunate. Um, the Riolu had Bullet Punch on it, and it propped a weakness policy on the Hatterene. And mm -hmm. I, I lost way too much momentum at that point. I, I could have won the game if I... Uh, it came down to Lapras versus Gigalith. Uh, if I, if I freeze-dried, I would have won. I didn't have to risk a miss. I unfortunately missed, but I really should have just freeze-dried anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, game two, she read my turn that I was going to fake out the, uh, what's it called? The Riolu. So she went for a detect. Okay. Um, so it was a lot harder to play the game out. I got smite. I got a uh, confusion. I got hit myself in confusion a few times by this GMAX smite. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought I was fine. I ended up clicking the wrong, but I knew the Delmize was going to go for ally switch. It was down to Delmize, uh, Delmize, Agilith versus, um, Urshifu and Lapras. But I ended up clicking the uh, the Gigalith instead of the Delmize. So I'm like, okay, I still think this is fine. I don't think she can KO both of my Pokemon. She's forced to Rock Slide. And then Gigalith goes for the Explosion. And it's banded. So it just picks up both of my Pokemon. And it's just Raichu versus... Uh, Raichu at 12 HP versus Riolu. All Riolu has to do is just protect and I die to the sand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I think it was poor play a bunch of poor playing and like... Playing way too fast, maybe mis misclicking in the uh, game one hurt me a lot. Yeah, I definitely think... I always feel like round one is the toughest round of the tournament just because you don't know what you're getting into and you've got a lot of nerves, and so uh, it's always really difficult. And then on top of that, facing something like Hatterene that introduces so much variance to the game is always really difficult, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hatterene was really annoying. I ended up playing it three times, I think, in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's something that I think got a little weaker without the Ndidi next to it to both provide redirection as well as to give it the Psychic Train, but it's still definitely one of the best Trick Room Sweepers that you can have, partially because it ha gives you so much potential to get lucky on top of doing so much damage. Yeah, that's that's huge. And also, it's, immu it's immune to Spore. Like, it has Magic Bounce, right? So it doesn't have to worry about stuff like Amoongus. Mm -hmm. That's really big, I think. That's why I wanted Duraludon especially in this uh, team, because I think that's one of the very few answers that will consistently beat Hatterene. 
Yeah. And so that was round one. And I think that your opponent round one actually ended up getting top 16. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, she did. So she did really well and, and is a very good player as well. Uh, but so tell me about the, the next few rounds and how you managed to come back. All right. So round two, I ended up playing a really weird team. It was Swoobat, Jolteon, um, Milotic, Gudra, and um, Talonflame. I think there was another. I forgot the last one. Okay. She brought the Jolteon and the uh, Milotic. I thought the Jolteon was going to be the maxer because I think that's a I think that's a decent uh, max Pokemon in this format. Mm-hmm. But uh, it ended up being the Milotic. It was a left, so I thought, okay, it's probably either a weakness policy one because it wants to like go for Volt Switch and proc the policy or something, or a Life Orb variant. But it was actually just a leftovers one. Um, I got a few Nuzzles off onto the Milotic and. Uh, I've been saying for a while, uh, Nuzzle is basically a second turn fake out sometimes. <laughs> like you get that full paralysis. Yeah. Especially yeah. in Dynamax turns. That's crucial. That happens so many times throughout my tournament. There wasn't really much my opponent could have done because she chose to max the uh, Milotic. That wasn't really much of an offensive threat for my team. So Bandit Urshifu was just able to clean up in the late game. The Swoobat never came, unfortunately, so we don't know what happened there. You know, my, my first thought is that the uh, the Swoobat would have the weakness policy and the Jolteon would proc that, because then it gets <laughs> four. But I guess we'll never know. Yeah. Round three. What did I do round three? I'm trying to remember. Um, I played another Hatterene. Another Hatterene. Uh, Braviary and uh, Diggersby and Rotom Wash. Diggersby, is a re- I find, is really annoying. Mm-hmm. Like with, But she didn't have redirection, which was huge. And she ended up not Dynamaxing it either. Okay. Um, it had a focus sash actually, so it was a little bit more annoying than I anticipated. She ended up maxing her Hatterene. I got really lucky with Nuzzle Paralysis. I got two turns where it was fully paralyzed and couldn't get off. I only got off one G Max Smite, and I was able to move for. Uh, I was able to snap through Confusion, which was huge. I think she. I think she could have won that game. Uh, but Paralysis helped a lot. Also. I think I played game two really well. Like, it came down to Duraludon versus three. And I said in my stream chat, like, guys, I'm still fine. This may look bad. But, like, I have a bunch of defense boosts and she can't really hit me. Mm-hmm. Um, she had a Serena as well, actually. It went for a high jump kick into my Duraludon. And it did, um, I was in Dynamax form. It only did, like, 20 damage after the fact that it was minus one and I had plus two defense. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> I turned back to normal form. I was around half health. So I'm like, I still think I win this game. I, cause I only, I think I only get KO'd by a crit. Mm-hmm. She ended up missing the high jump kick, so there was no chance of a crit anyway. Yeah, Duraludon. I, I know you said it didn't feel like a bulky Pokemon, but really, it's still very physically bulky, and especially once it gets those steel spikes boost off, you're just not doing any damage to it on the physical side. Yeah, especially with the assault vest, you don't have to worry about those special attacks, which was the big thing. Mm-hmm. Like it can actually do something to Primarina rather than have to worry about getting a Starfall and taking like. 90 (laughs) percent yeah and also one more thing is that uh like on this channel we've had a couple team reports with uh sing clefairy and we talked a lot about how like you don't have to get lucky per se by if you're you're, if you click it once maybe you're getting lucky but a lot of times you have those passive turns where you don't you're not doing anything with the pokemon on the field and so doing things like clicking sing or clicking nuzzle means that you not only have the opportunity, you're giving yourself the opportunity to have a really, really positive outcome from that turn. And even if nothing comes out of it, like you weren't really doing anything with that Pokemon anyway. Yeah. So round four, I ended up playing a Pinkurchin Raichu, Alolan Raichu team. It had a, it had um, Volcarona, Runarigus, Primarina, and um, Corviknight. I think it was a really cool team. Mm-hmm. It was like a supportive Volk with a string shot and... Um, struggle bug so her main goal was to like click rage powder trick room i just led raichu lapras versus the uh, runarigus and the um volcarona i just faked out the uh volcarona i thought she was going to protect the runarigus but turns out she didn't i asked her after she didn't have protect on it hmm. i was worried about random sash or um pasho berry but none of those happened and i just killed the runarigus turn one and it was really tough for her at that point to break my lapras that's, I think, one of the uh, struggles with Hard Trick Room right now is that 
it, it's so hard to get Trick Room up with all of these really powerful attackers and so much fake out going on right now, as well as like a Moongus that can put you to sleep. Um, and while Hatterene can can deal with some of those, uh, Runarigus doesn't deal with nearly as many, I think. Yeah. Especially since she did have her Lapras answers. She had um, Pinkurchin and Raichu Alola. But since I have my own Raichu Kanto, I uh, just have a Lightning Rod for that. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't really much she could do in the matchup. Um, round five, I played against a Klefki team, actually. Okay. It was Klefki, Lipard, Primarina, Braviary, Hitmontop, and Duraludon. Um, so this Klefki was trying to get up some screens, and she was, she actually had a plan to max the pre Marina. I saw the Hitmontop. The Hitmontop, I find, is very annoying, because I have three things weak to fighting. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like switching her out with my team much. So it's mainly getting into a position. She couldn't really lead it, because I have a Serena. Right. And I also have a, a Lapras, a Talonflame, a lot of things that threaten it immediately. So her main game plan was to get up screens with her Klefki. And I was a little bit worried because, you know, Lapras doesn't have the best special attack stat in the world. So I thought I wouldn't be able to KO it. But uh, <laughs> Helping Hand uh, Max Geyser just ended up KOing the Klefki through the light screen. And I also got a few nozzles onto that Pre-Marina. Pre-Marina wasn't able to move often. Um, Yeah, she never brought the Braviary in um, Swiss. She did bring it in Top Cut, but I'll talk about that later. Uh... Yeah, that was it. Was interesting to see those. I was honestly worried about Lipard as well, with the fact it has Snarl. Mm -hmm. But it never came to that set, so we just get lucky with those second turn fake outs. Serena was doing really well. I was able to max Serena game two because she didn't bring her um, Braviary. Yeah, and of course, when you max a Serena, you get to you get to click your priority Grassy Glides after it's done Dynamaxing. So it really is feels like it's a four turn Dynamax almost. Yeah, um, one shotting a Pre Marina with a Helping Hand. Max overgrowth is super satisfying. I bet. Um, round six was a really hype match. I played uh, Rachel and End. Uh, she's won an international before, I think, in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a really cool team of... Uh, it was like a hybrid team of Colossal and uh, Beat Up. So it was like Sneasel, Colossal, and uh, Cobalion. Oh. With uh, Pre Marina as the uh, Aqua Jet user as well. A uh, strong attacker as well. Uh, Pharaoh Thorn in case, you know, it's just a, as an endgame option. Mm -hmm. My game one was to get a call right. I have I can't fake out the Sneasel because uh, it has inner focus. Right. So I, I made the call that she was going to fake me out. So I made the read and went into uh, Serena on the fake out. And I got that read correctly. And that allowed me to, since she didn't beat up with her... Uh, Sneasel. Cobalion's attack stat isn't very good. I honestly don't think it's that good of a Pokemon. I, I agree. And that's my favorite strategy against it, too, is just to put it, make it paralyzed so that it's not fast and it's not doing much damage unless you beat it up. And or and, just, and it also has to Dynamax. And so it, it, I feel like that's usually the best way to deal with uh, things like Cobalion. Terrakion, on the other hand, I think is much more scary. Yes. This was also a Life Orb Cobalion as well. So even, even with the Life Orb, it was still doing no damage. Um... She, her game two, she I got the call wrong, and uh, I ended up losing to Ferrothorn in the end game. So game three, I decided to uh, change up my position to actually lead Talonflame and Serena. Sorry, Raichu and Serena, I think. Yeah, Raichu and Serena. So I can get off Nezzles and stuff. So I thought I was in a really awkward spot. So I decided to max my Talonflame. And uh, maxing the Talonflame was big because uh, she was hoping to KO me with her triple Axel of Sneasel. Um, I was able to get the Airstream off KO the Cobalion. Even though I had, like, a, a regular Lapras, I was still fine. I had, a uh, Banded Urshifu at 12 HP. Uh, Urshifu lived the, uh, max Airstream from Cobalion. I just want to let you guys know. Like, no Veil up, no Intimidate. It just lived because, uh, Cobalion's attack stat isn't that good. Yeah, and, and honestly, Urshifu has a surprisingly good physical defense stat, too. Uh, it's... Yeah, I think it's like a reverse conk almost. Mm -hmm. It's definitely lived some attacks that I haven't expected it to live when I've been using it. Yeah. Um, I honest, The fact that I was able to Dynamax the Talonflame literally won me the game. I got the uh, Max Flare into the Sneasel to weaken the Hyper Voice from the Pre-Marina. Mm -hmm. 
So Tal Max Talonflame was able to live the Hyper Voice, which uh, normally it can't do. <laughs> right. Um, I got into an end game where I was like, uh oh, I think I might still lose because this pre marina has Aqua Jet, and uh, I can't lose my Urshifu here because otherwise I lose to Ferrothorn in the end. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that I have Queenly Majesty on the field and she can't do that. So I'm just like, oh, I think I just win now. And I just close combat, just one shot the Ferrothorn and uh, KO the pre marina with Grassy Glide. So you needed one more win to secure top cut, is that right? Yes. My uh, next round was um, somebody from Japan. And they had a rental team, actually. I didn't know it was a rental team until after I uh, until after somebody sent it to me. Um, it was actually banded Rhyperior. Oh, interesting. Um, so I was worried about that at some point, but she just went really for ally switch. Which I was honestly expecting. Um, it didn't really help her because I just KO Dusclops with uh, with Banded Wicked Blow. I wasn't scared of Rhyperior because I had um, I had a bunch of defense boosts on my Duraludon. She couldn't really stop it. Game two, she led Noivern, and so I thought, okay, this thing might have a sash then if she's choosing to Dynamax it. So I go for t I lead Talonflame. I go for Tailwind and uh, Max Whirlwind and just one shot the Dynamax Noivern. I'm like. Okay, I guess that's the game then, because she really couldn't do anything around that. She had no Dynamax, she had a Delmize and an Urshifu, mm -hmm. which really couldn't do much against my Duraludon at that point. Yeah, Noivern's another Pokemon that I, I, I hadn't really seen the first week, but it's really picked up in usage over the last like few days, basically. Um, and so I, I haven't... Yeah, I, I guess I'm not really sure what it does, and uh, I guess you didn't get to find out either. Yeah, it uh, it just got one shot immediately. Um, I do think it might have potential though, because its speed stat is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Only thing that is unfortunate about it is its special attack. But if um, if you run, maybe if you run Life Orb, maybe it'll pack a punch still. Maybe that'll fix it. I don't know. And my last round, I played the Porygon Z that I was hoping to play, and uh, my pl my plan worked perfectly. Basically, she led uh, Porygon Z, Clefairy in game two. Not in game one, she played it differently. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was able to uh, paralyze her Urshifu, make it useless, and uh, just get Talonflame and to sweep to allow my Pokemon to sweep in the end game with Banded Urshifu and um, Duraludon. She couldn't really do much around it. Mm -hmm. And so you went seven one in Swiss in day one. Yeah. Uh, and that put you in. I believe you got a buy in top thirty two, so it put you into top sixteen. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so tell me, how much prep did you have for Top Cut? Did you know what your opponents were using? And uh... I did. I did. Uh, a lot of people were wondering why I made certain plays I did in my Top 16 match, and that's because I had insider info. Okay. So you had a little bit of practice against your opponent then? Yeah. I prepped for both options that I was about to play. I was, wor I was worried about the one matchup I did end up getting, mm -hmm. which was, uh, again, it's Hatterene. <laughs> Uh, and it's, there's no really real consistent way of beating Hatterene, I feel like, because you have to worry about, um, it, in the end of the day, you end up worrying about VMAX Smite rolls, or if they make the correct play. Right. Um, she had, I played Dina in, uh, top 16. She had, a uh, Sweet Veil Serena, which was huge. That was very good information, because it allowed me to, uh, fake out and Brave Bird freely, without having to worry about Queenly Majesty. Yeah, Sweet Bell Serena is something that's uh, a lot better when your opponent doesn't know that it's Sweet Bell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I learned the Hatterene was Focus Sash, too. Mm -hmm. um, this match was actually played on stream. Uh, the main stream. I mean, all my games were played on stream, but this was on the main stream. Um, she led a Moongus Hatterene, which is what I was expecting her to do. So I led Raichu Duraludon. I thought her game plan was to like go for maybe a max guard and spore and then make my Duraludon useless and that's how she wins this game, basically. So I made the decision that I was going to fake out the Hatterene in case I wanted to get up Trick Room and um, max lighten the Amoongus. Okay. Now, I know it might have looked really weird that uh, she was able to get up her free Trick Room because of the fact she had the Focus Sash on the Hatterene and I didn't break the Sash through the Protect. But I... Once I hit the max guard with max lightning and I get my Duraludon sport, I lose turn one. Right. 
So I went for the play that would uh, I would give me more options, even though it looked like I was in a bad position and I could have gotten a lot more positioning if I hit the Hatterene. I think that I made the safer play and it paid off in the end. Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, when you when you feel like a matchup is favorable, you're allowed to make uh, much safer plays, even if it gives you like even if you don't like make the read correctly or if your opponent reads it, you're still in a strong position afterwards. Whereas if your opponent makes a hard read in the other direction, you don't you really don't want to just auto lose. Yeah. I know my t my team is very hyper offensive, so getting up trick room against it is very scary. But I had enough tools to where I could uh, play around in trick room. I my talent flame was strong enough to just one shot the Serena, so it ended up being a four versus one with the Dynamax Marowak versus the rest of my team. So I was able to outposition the uh, trick room turns and get in my Urshifu to just wicked blow, and KO the um, the Marowak. Game two, she she changed up her game plan just as I imagined she would. She went Talonflame and uh, Water Urshifu. I knew the Urshifu was, um, as a, we know the Hatterene Sash, the Urshifu was Life Orb. And I knew the Talonflame had Quick Guard. And since I went for a Fake Out in Game 1, I figure her best answer is to go for the, the Quick Guard, right? That's what most people respond with. Sure. So I thought the play was to Nuzzle into the Urshifu. And uh, she did Quick Guard. So I got the Nuzzle off and the Max Lightning, and that just KO'd the Urshifu turn 1. And I was in a great position immediately. Yeah, definitely. She didn't bring her Hatterene. She had brought a Marowak and she brought um Serena. So I was just able to uh, max Wormwind around the Marowak and uh, lower lo just KO all of uh, Marowak's friends again and lower the Marowak's attack stat. Nice. And so that was another another clean 2-0 uh, in, in top 16 that brought you into the top 8. So top eight, I played against um, Kiara. Kiara is um, she's a senior. She she's a uh, very young, but she I think she's she's a very good player for for how young she is. If you guys don't know, she has a account on Twitter. Her mother runs her Twitter. Uh, she's doing her little invitational right now. But uh, I had to play her for top eight. I was very impressed that she got that far. I actually got some insider info from her team. That, uh, what the items were. So it was a uh, banded Urshifu. Uh, Life Orb Durant, which is huge. It's not Assault Vest. So that means uh, Talonflame can get a free Heat Wave off into it when I get the position to. She has her own Talonflame. She had a Dracovish. Dracovish is scary if uh, she plays against my Lapras and my um, Duraludon correctly. Like, I think if she was able to position around it. Toxtricity is annoying because it goes around my... Uh, my a lightning rod and um it was actually magnet it wasn't um specs or anything so going into the game uh she led her toxtricity and her uh, talent flame against my raichu and my lapras so i thought okay i just get off a fake out here and into the talent flame and uh she actually maxes her toxtricity so i'm like oh she can make the mistake of going for stun shock but she actually went for max ooze. So I'm like, into my talk, my Raichu, because she her game plan was to get rid of my Raichu and uh, win with Toxtricity, which I think was super smart. I think she, if she was it, she, she could have been able to execute that game plan properly. I think if she KO'd my Raichu and without taking too much damage, she was able to win that game. But Yeah, Toxtricity is really scary, especially once it gets the one or two special attack boosts from the max ooze. Um, so... And, and with speed control from Talonflame, although it sounds like you just KO'd the Talonflame right away. Yeah. Um, I basically just doubled the Talonflame immediately. I didn't want it on the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed like you had uh, a lot of options to, to do damage to the Toxicity, and so if it was slower than your Pokemon, it just wasn't going to do enough. Yeah, uh, I feel I was scared that the Toxicity was going to KO my main threats to the Dracovish, and then she'd have Dracovish in the back waiting for me. Mm -hmm. But she actually had regular Durant, like it couldn't Dynamax because she Dynamaxed her Toxtricity. And Durant really couldn't do much, it just got blown back by a Max Geyser. Mm -hmm. um, game 2, she actually chooses to change up her game plan, goes for it with the Durant Talonflame lead. So I'm like, alright Talonflame, it's your time to shine! With a fake out in Heatwave, I let Talonflame ride you into this. Uh, she unfortunately... Switches out her talent flame, which is not her talent flame, her ant, which makes sense. I got the fake out tailwind off, sorry, fake out heat wave off, and it broke the gale wings. 
into the Talon Flame, which was huge. Um, so then I was able to just get my Tailwind Volt Switch and KO the Talon Flame. She had no speed control, and uh, the Ant really couldn't do much even in the Dynamax form against uh, my Pokemon because I had Heat Wave and I had um, my Lapras. I don't think she. I think she went too hard in the um, Durant Durant mode of the team. I think she tried to force it in. I think her her game plan in game one was better. Apparently, her mom messaged me after she was very nervous. <laughs> I, I bet it's it's a it's a tough position to be in, especially as a senior playing against a a very accomplished master like you. Yeah. Um. So top, they had some issues going into the stream. They were going to stream both top four games, but uh, unfortunately, the LAN wasn't working. Just like mm -hmm. the LAN mode never worked. It didn't work for finals either. But um. Give us spectator mode, please. Yes, please. That was horrible. We spent two hours setting that up. That was not fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I've had to deal with that for Rose Tower tournaments. It's really just not fun to deal with at all. It'd be really nice if we just had a really easy way to, to stream tournaments on over the internet. Yeah, their main thing of streaming it was to uh, stream with Skype, right? And I'm not a fan of Skype. I don't have Skype installed. I, I currently don't have Skype installed. I installed it specifically for the fact of this tournament. So it was streamed on my channel instead of my top four match. And it was a rematch against uh, Nemesis, who I played in round five with the cleft key. Okay. Uh, she changed up her game plan. She actually brought the life hard. And I knew life hard was slower than the, um, what's it called? The Raichu. So I just went for a fake out resonance immediately and just picked it off turn one. So I'm like, okay, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, she did Dynamax her uh, Duraludon instead of the Primarina. Because uh, she she wanted to deal with Raichu because she know she knows the Raichu is a pain to deal with. Sure. Klefki uh, came in. Uh, it set up screens. It kind of went down. It didn't since the Adralodon was not AV. It was um Life Orb. My Residence was doing like seventy five percent to it. Mm -hmm. So it couldn't really do much after I got the Aurora Veil up. Ended up coming down to Talonflame versus um hit on top right and uh she her last day chest for it was going for sucker punch she does get a crit but uh it doesn't ko my talent plan and i was able to win the game yeah that maybe that 76 hp really put in work <laughs> yeah um and now going into game two she actually i thought i wasn't sure if she timed out or not because she did leave her her top two which was the braviary um, the Braviary switched out immediately, which was unfortunate because I was hoping to get, like, a resonance off into it. Um, her Klefki started setting up some screens, and I was starting to... She was positioning really well around my Dynamax, so that concerned me that I could have potentially lost the game. So I, I decided to nuzzle the, uh, Braviary. It was probably going to be Lumberry. I, I fully expected the Lum on it, but I decided might as well break the Lumberry now. I went for Freeze Dry just for some damage into, uh, the Dynamax, uh... Braviary. I ended up getting a freeze on it, which was huge. Like it made my game plan a lot easier. I don't get I don't think it won me the game specifically, but it just made the game easier. I basically was just trying to prioritize the fact that uh I needed to get rid of Pre Marina so that uh my Talon Flame could win in the late game. And uh it, again it came down to hit on top versus uh Duraludon, both Duraludon and um I brought Serena this time. And I was able to still beat the uh, tip on top. So it was a 2-0. Yeah. And so that brought you into the finals of this tournament. Uh, out of 174 players, uh, two were left. And uh, tell me a little bit about your finals match. So going into this finals match, I was watching the top four play. I was hoping I didn't have to play her because uh, her team was very scary for me. I don't like Terrakion plus Clefairy. Clefairy and Terrakion are very scary to deal with if they're together. Mm -hmm. Because friend guard is just very annoying. It's just, well, they redirect my nuzzles. Uh, this Clefairy was actually very lucky throughout the entire tournament. I was watching uh, a lot of girls get uh, sing to death. <laughs> yeah. It connected every single sing it went for. It's it's a it's a good move. It's a it's a it gives you a lot of options when your Clefairy is sitting on the field not doing anything. And if you hit it, you just kind of win the game. You got a 55% chance of just winning the game there. Yeah. Um. So that was my game plan to not get that ha uh, happening. Uh, she had a high dragon. She had a um, a spec Sylveon and a banded Azumarill. Mm -hmm. 
So I think a combination of that was really difficult to break. Also, Sa the Talon Flame on her side was Sash. Yeah. So that was very difficult. Um, I decided for my game plan, I was going to play really passively. I was going to start like burning her Dynamax and then go from there. That was my game plan. I led Raichu and uh, Talon Flame, which is very passive. Mm -hmm. But I decided, I figured she was going to lead the Clefairy to Rakion, and that was her best way of beating me. Um, I was able to deal with the Clefairy in the end uh, by faking it out and uh, Tailwinding, letting my Talon Flame go down. Right, uh, Clefairy was basically forced to follow me. It couldn't get off a of Sing safely because otherwise her Terrakion would just be uh, paralyzed since it was the Glaive Form variant and not the Lum. Mm -hmm. So it actually was a very... It was worse matchup than I expected because her Terrakion actually had Max Quake. And Max Quake's very annoying for my two special attackers. My game plan was Duraludon. And uh, Duraludon doesn't do well against the fact that there's a uh, Max Quake. But she didn't have enough turns, I think, to uh, beat me. Because I, um, I had defense boosts and I had attack drops. Mm -hmm. And, and um, her, her Terrakion was... Uh, it's non-Dynamax anymore, right? So it couldn't really take hits. Right. Um, the end game was basically Serena versus... Serena Duraludon versus um, Terrakion and Sylveon. I knew the Sylveon was spec, so it couldn't protect. So I decided to double the Sylveon. Because I figured the... I have defense boost, so I'm able to take some hits. I'm not going to get killed by any of uh, Terrakion's moves. Terrakion goes for protect, which is amazing for me. Turns out I didn't even need to double the Sylveon. Uh, Power Whip just one-shotted the Sylveon immediately. Thanks to the fact that I am Miracle Seed on my uh, Serena. And she really couldn't do anything against uh, the Duraludon and the Serena at the end. Um, game two, she adapted very well. I'm very glad I never ended up leading Duraludon against her. Because the Hydreigon was Assault Vest. And it also had Max Quake. Beside a Clefairy. Mm -hmm. So I was never going to KO it. <laughs> um, uh, she... I got the Taunt off on the Clefairy. Clefairy had no attacking moves, which was huge. So she was forced to struggle. Mm-hmm. The struggle was actually it random. Fortunately, it randomly targeted my Serena and not my twelve HP Talonflame. So uh, I ended up having to max my Serena in the end game because of the fact she was getting so much de special defense boost. I couldn't beat her with my Duraludon. So I decided I was going to go for Max Flutter by lower her special attack, and then deal with it in the end game with Duraludon. Get up the grassy terrain for my um, Serena. Unfortunately, she brought Talonflame instead of uh, Sylveon, so so uh, Talonflame was an issue. I decided my main game plan was to not break the Gale Wings, because the second I break Gale Wings, Talonflame can hit me with Brave Bird. Right. Which was huge. Um, so I, there was a lot of people questioning why I doubled the Terrakion that was obviously going to protect. That's why I didn't want the fact that it, to break it, the Gale Wings. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't just KO the Talonflame because it was Sash. So... Um, I was really confused in the end game. It came down to um again Serena Duraludon versus um Terrakion and um Talonflame. I was very confused. The Terrakion did switch in on a Thunderbolt. So it did take some chip, but my Serena was at minus one thanks to the max whirlwind that hit into it. So I was worried the grassy glide wasn't gonna be enough to KO the uh Terrakion, and once that happens, then uh, she gets a free close combat in my Terraladon, and Serena cannot beat Talonflame in the endgame. Mm -hmm. But she ended up going for the double protect, and didn't get it. I got the crit on the Grassy Glide, so we will never know if that uh, crit mattered or not. But uh, I, uh, she, the fact that she didn't attack there was huge. I did KO the uh, Terrakion anyway, so it didn't matter. And it was just Talonflame versus at minus four special attack. Versus the um, Duraludon in the end game. Uh, I think what made the game was the fact that Serena was able to take an overheat from Talonflame. Mm -hmm. It did 90%, but it didn't KO. Uh, a lot of people were shocked at the fact that I survived. But uh, Talonflame doesn't have a really good special attack stat. Serena Serena's pretty bulky. Yeah, it was, so. it was a really uh, crazy finals to watch. It was a really, really enjoyable set. And if you want to watch all of Fiona's games, uh, I believe two of the matches are on... Uh, temporal VGC's Twitch, and Fiona, where can they watch the rest of your matches?
Uh, they could watch the rest of my matches on um, twitch.tv slash Yoshi dot sorry Yoshi underscore and underscore Lugia or my tw or my YouTube. I'm currently trying to upload them to YouTube since I don't want the vods to expire at um at uh, youtube.com slash Yoshi and Lugia. Yeah, and so we'll have a link to both of those in the description down below. Uh, so if you want to know more about how to use this team, uh, you can watch Fiona destroy every single one of her opponents except for one um, <laughs> in the in these in these videos. Uh, we're also going to have Elisa's team featured on the channel as well, the other team that got to the finals. Um, Fiona, congratulations once again. Um, do you have any final words or shout outs? Um, so I want to, again, I already shouted him out in the video, in the interview, but again, I want to shout out Sable IVGC for the spreads. Five out of six mons on the team are spread, oh, sorry, four out of six, technically Urshifu is 252, but uh, four out of six mons are, uh, built by him. And, uh, also I was very nervous about this going into this tournament for series six. Um, the fact that I was testing all week, couldn't find a team until the last minute, and, uh, I just kept ranting to uh, uh, Ryan in the end that uh, I couldn't have a team, and he was able to just put up with my my stress. So thank you to that. Thank you for him for uh, putting up with me. Um, I want to thank the people who supported me on my stream and uh, helped me get to affiliate. I'm very excited to uh, finally uh, get to affiliate, get some emotes going. Yeah, definitely. Make sure to check out her Twitch. It's a uh... Again, very, very high quality play and uh, a lot of different teams that are really strong. So uh, it's definitely worth watching if you want to uh, watch some high level gameplay. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it was a pleasure having you and to hear all about this awesome team that um, is, at least right now, the best team in Series 6. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.